In this video, I'm gonna give you 50 plus resources that every blockchain developer must know about. So whether you're a total beginner just building tutorials or you're an advanced developer already building real world projects, you need to know about these and watch this video because everyone can get a lot of value from this list. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain developer. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And also, in just a few short days, my brand new program, Blockchain Mastery University, is launching on January 29th. You can click the link down below to sign up. All right, so let's jump in and get started. All right, so let's get started. We've got a lot of ground to cover here. So the first category I want to cover are uh, development frameworks and IDEs, okay? So the first tool is uh, the Truffle Suite. Okay, so if you've been watching this channel for a while, you've probably seen me do tutorials using Truffle, all right? What it does is it allows you to develop smart contracts. You can write the code for the smart contracts inside of here. You can write tests for these contracts to make sure that they're robust. You can deploy them to a network. Uh, you can develop client-side applications inside of Truffle. I uh, highly recommend checking out Truffle if you haven't already. You can find it in pretty much any of my tutorials where I show you how to build a full-stack application. So another framework that you might not know about is uh, Embark. So Embark is created by Status, which I'll talk about here in a little while. Um, but it's another smart contract development framework worth checking out if you're looking for an alternative to Truffle. You can install it with NPM just like this, uh, just like you install Truffle as well. Um, you can go to the Embark website and see all the uh, features and benefits of using something like that. So the next tool that I want to mention is Remix. Um, likewise, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you've seen me use Remix in some capacity. So what Remix allows you to do is develop smart contracts in your browser. All right, so you can see the source code for the smart contract inside of here. Um, you can compile this smart contract, deploy it to a blockchain all in your browser. You can save these files and come back to them later. Um, it's really great for kind of just uh, having a sandbox environment that you can work inside of. I also use this sometimes to deploy my smart contracts to real blockchains. Um, you can just copy and paste it inside of here. You know, click compile, run it, and then deploy it to a network. All right, so the next uh, item is Ethereum Studio. And this is something that I've been keeping my eye on. I um, hope you all like this. This is another browser-based IDE that's a little more advanced than Remix. Um, it allows you to create client-side applications and stuff like that as well. It has an in-browser blockchain. You can build a full-stack application. Uh, it's got built-in wallets. You can you know, live code your web app. You can also export all the source code for your dApp as well. So I highly recommend checking out Ethereum Studio if you're looking for uh, kind of an alternative to Remix that has a few more bells and whistles and also a really nice uh, interface. So the next category is Ethereum clients. All right, so you basically need a, a way to connect to a blockchain whenever you're developing uh, for it. And you can download your own blockchain with Ganache. This is a point and click blockchain. This is called a personal blockchain. It allows you to run a blockchain on your computer uh, really easily. It gives you accounts for free that are already pre-mined with Ether. Uh, you can export their private keys, um, You know, import the mnemonic into your own wallet, all kinds of good stuff. So if you've seen me do my other tutorials, you've likely seen me use Ganache. So some other Ethereum clients that you need to know about uh, if you want to do some more serious blockchain development outside of uh, you know, maybe just tutorials or, or local development. Uh, the first one I would recommend is Geth. Okay. So Geth is actually an Ethereum client that you can use to connect to the Ethereum mainnet um, and, or any Ethereum test network, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, it's actually put out by the Ethereum Foundation. So basically, like if you want to run your own Ethereum node, right, a full-blown Ethereum node, I would highly recommend checking out Geth. You can also run it in light mode so that you don't have to download the entire blockchain. Um, but yeah, so that's Geth. The next uh, Ethereum client that I would recommend looking at would be Parity. Parity is an alternative to Geth um, that you know essentially does the same thing. It allows you to connect to the Ethereum blockchain, run your own node so that you're um, actually connecting to it directly, okay? There are lots of benefits to running your own nodes, like it's probably the most uh, trustless way to connect to the blockchain because you know that you have a direct connection to it. You're not trusting someone else to host your node for you. All right, so the next um, thing I want to mention is Infura. So um, 
You might have seen me using Fewer on my channel before if you've been watching this for a while, but if you're new around here, uh, and Fura allows you to connect to an Ethereum node uh, directly over the web. So it's Ethereum node as a service. They also support IPFS, which I'll talk about soon. So if you want to connect to a real Ethereum network, like the main net or a test network, for example, you can just sign up and they'll give you a link uh, where you can connect to a node directly so that you don't have to host it yourself and keep it in sync and download all the blockchain data and things like that. So I like Infura a lot. It's a really great way to uh, you know point and click and get that benefit. So next, I want to talk about programming languages. The first one is the Solidity programming language. So again, if you've done any of these tutorials before, you've no doubt seen me use Solidity uh, to create Ethereum smart contracts. Um, but if you haven't and you're new to blockchain development, uh, Solidity is the primary language for creating Ethereum smart contracts. It's a really uh, beginner-friendly language that looks a lot like uh, C++, Python, and JavaScript. Okay, So it's a full-fledged programming language. Uh, it's fully featured. It's you know, advanced as well. Um, so don't think that beginner-friendly just means that it can't do anything. It's, it's very robust. And uh, if you're going to be a blockchain developer and you want to work with Ethereum, then understanding Solidity is a must. Next, I want to mention Viper. So Viper is a language for creating Ethereum smart contracts that's heavily influenced by Python. And I would call Viper more of an experimental programming language uh, as an alternative to Ethereum, uh, sorry, as an alternative to Solidity. Some people use it, uh, but unless you have a really compelling reason to use Viper, uh, I would stick with Solidity, but I wanted you to know about it in case you are you know, just checking things out and want to know more about the blockchain development landscape. Okay, so the next um, library that I want to mention is Web3.js. So uh, blockchain development, especially in the Ethereum ecosystem, heavily relies upon JavaScript, okay? We use JavaScript to... Uh, write tests against smart contracts, write scripts, write websites that talk to them. Um, and anytime you're doing these kinds of things, you're basically doing client-side interactions with the smart contract. You're calling its functions, you're reading information from it, you're creating transactions, and you need a way to do this uh, without having to write a bunch of extra code yourself. And that's exactly what Web3.js does. So for example, if you wanted to build a website that talked to the blockchain, with that used JavaScript, you could use Web3.js to connect to an Ethereum node and interact with the blockchain, talk to smart contracts, all that kind of stuff. So highly recommend checking out Web3.js. I've got several tutorials on my channel that show you how to do that. All right, so next is uh, Ethers.js. So Ethers.js is a similar kind of library that allows you to interact with the Ethereum blockchain and its ecosystem. All right, you can uh, you know control wallets, you can uh, talk to smart contracts, interact with the blockchain. A lot of the same kinds of things you can do with Web3.js, you can also do with Ethers.js. Okay, so um, it, this is something you should definitely know about if you want to work in the Ethereum ecosystem and uh, write JavaScript, okay? So the next thing I'll talk about is uh, the Python version of Web3. You know, I talked about Web3.js a minute ago. So you can also do a lot of these types of things with Python, all right? So if you have any Python application that wants to talk to the blockchain, read information from it, write information uh, to it, uh, interact with smart contracts, one really helpful uh, application of Web3 Python is creating smart contracts on the fly. I see this done a lot. We're basically... You know, say somebody creates a web application that can deploy a smart contract, then uh, this is a really popular use case for the Python version of Web3 because you can do it from a back end. All right. So next, I want to mention a library. Uh, so when you're writing smart contracts, there are a lot of problems that are kind of solved already that you don't really need to solve again for yourself. Okay. And that's exactly where some of these libraries come into play. So the first one I'll mention is uh, Open Zeppelin. So Open Zeppelin's got some off-the-shelf smart contracts that uh, let you get started really fast. So let's say you wanted to create an ERC-20 token, for example, your own cryptocurrency on Ethereum. You could kind of bootstrap that with um, one of these token contracts. So let's say you wanted to just create a generic ERC-20 token. You could go to ERC-20 inside of here and uh, use this smart contract and import it into your project. So I show you how to do this in some of my tutorials on creating ICOs and things like that. Um, it's got a lot of other really helpful libraries like doing math uh, inside of Solidity. 
uh, doing ownership of smart contracts and all kinds of stuff. Uh, highly recommend just browsing through the Open Zeppelin contracts repository that I've linked to below just to get an idea of what's possible, okay? And also, if you want to learn like really good development practices, this is a great repository to browse and just look at their code and see how they do things. Like, you know, if you want to learn to write tests for smart contracts, just look at the tests they write, right? Just go inside of one of these and uh, read through how they do it. They've done a really good job. The next library is Truffle HD Wallet Provider. And you'll see at the top here that says this repo is deprecated. Uh, it's moved to Truffle Suite, but I still use this all the time. So essentially what HD Wallet Provider allows you to do is uh, connect to a blockchain and keep a wallet inside your Truffle project. So uh, you can use your private key or your mnemonic seed phrase to essentially create uh, a blockchain connection where you can sign transactions on your account's behalf from your Truffle project. So a really popular use case is you want to deploy a smart contract from your Truffle project uh, to a main, the main net or a test network, then you can use Truffle HD Wallet Provider to do that. All right. So the next um, library is Truffle Flattener. Okay, so sometimes when you're writing smart contracts, you basically have to break it up into multiple files, like you'll see uh, you know, your token, like let's say you use one of these open Zeppelin libraries I've mentioned a minute ago, like I'll show you some of the source code. Uh, let's see here, contracts, and let's look at a crowd sale contract, and we'll look at, let's see here, a minted crowd sale. So you can see this imports smart contracts here, and then it inherits right here. And you can see, uh, you know, this is one file, but it imports other files. So sometimes you want to create one big file uh, to see all your code in one place. And that's exactly what Truffle Flattener does. It takes all the code and puts it into one file so that you can create, uh, you know, one single file. And this has got a really popular application whenever you're, you know, verifying smart contracts on Etherscan. You want to create, make your smart contract public so that people can read the source code. Well, that's a way to do it. All right. So next is Drizzle. Uh, and Drizzle allows you to create front-end applications that talk directly to your smart contracts. So it's got a bunch of reusable UI components and things like that. This is put out by the Truffle Suite. You can import this into your Truffle project. Uh, I've got a tutorial on how to use Drizzle. You can just look that up on YouTube. Um, and this basically just allows you to create these front ends without writing a bunch of code yourself. All right, so this is a really great tool that you should also check out. Next, let's talk about Ethereum wallets and browsers. Okay, so the first one I'll talk about is MetaMask. And if you've been watching this channel, no doubt you've heard, you've seen me use MetaMask. Um, you, know, you can see my MetaMask extension right here in Chrome. So essentially, uh, whenever you're using the blockchain, your web browser doesn't connect to it natively. It most, at least most ones don't. So if you're using you know, Chrome or Safari or Internet Explorer or something like that, um, they're not going to talk to the blockchain out of the box. So you need a special browser or a special browser extension in order to do that. And that's exactly what MetaMask does. All right, you can just install a Chrome extension to do that. It's got Ethereum wallet inside of it, so you can hold cryptocurrency and sign transactions and use dApps, you know, any blockchain-based application that connects to Ethereum. All right, so there are several others out there. So there are also web wallets, okay? So my Ether wallet is an example. Um, you can basically, you know, use cryptocurrency with a web wallet like this. There's, you know, another one called uh, My Crypto, which was um, an offshoot of My Ether Wallet. You can see the logos kind of look similar. So this is another web wallet. All right. So another one I want to mention is Trust Wallet. So this is actually a blockchain browser and crypto wallet for mobile. All right. You can download it from the App Store. You can get it on Google Play. I really like Trust Wallet as a way of you know holding cryptocurrency and also using the blockchain and uh, interacting with blockchain-based applications. All right. So the next one is Coinbase Wallet. It's a very similar concept. You can hold cryptocurrency. You can send it, receive it. Uh, you can hold crypto collectibles. And I believe you can also use dApps inside of uh, Coinbase Wallet. Yeah, you can use like crypto goodies. You can see it here. All right, the next one is uh, Trezor. So this is a hardware wallet. This is basically a way for you to keep track of your, uh, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all kinds of stuff. But like if you want to use an Ethereum wallet that uh, only connect, it can only use with a, with a hardware dongle, this is what Trezor is for. Also the same thing with uh, Ledger. So if you want to sign transactions, but you have, to, you know, you, you, you must hold like one of these hardware pieces in order to do it, uh, Trezor and Ledger are both great options for doing that. So the next one is actually a full-blown blockchain browser. So that's what Brave is. 
Um, you might have seen their cryptocurrency bat. Uh, bat tokens are essentially what you earn inside of Brave for watching advertisements. But you can uh, use Brave to connect to the blockchain and use uh, blockchain-based applications natively out of the box with this browser. All right, next we're going to talk about block explorers uh, and ways to monitor the blockchain, see how dApps are used, and some utilities that are really nice for blockchain developers. So the first one is Etherscan.io. Um, if you want to you know, see anything about the Ethereum blockchain, this is a great way to do it. See the blocks, the block numbers, inspect transactions, read smart contracts. Uh, highly recommend checking out Etherscan.io. For example, you can just look at this latest transaction, uh, see the block time, see the transaction fee, you know, what happened. Happened. If you want to look at a smart contract, um, you know this is a great tool that you must know about if you're an Ethereum developer. The next uh, monitoring tool will be DAP Radar. Okay, so this is a DAP explorer that gives you real uh, data about DAP usage. So anything that's you know powered by smart contracts in the blockchain, they show you the usage statistics like the number of transactions, uh, the amount of cryptocurrency held in the uh, smart contracts, how much. Cryptocurrency, you know, flowed through the smart contracts, the users. So, like, let's look at volume uh, right here. So, you can see, like, MakerDAO had $2.1 million of volume over this period, okay? Uh, one inch exchange had $1 million, all right? Compound Finance had close to a million dollars. So, these, this is a really great tool for also seeing what's happening on the blockchain right now. Next is uh, ETH Gas Station. So if you want to learn about Ethereum gas, I've um, got a video about that. You can just search for it. And also, if you want to uh, like do some calculations on gas, like see how much is a transaction going to cost, um, you can you know use this tool to figure that out. If you want to see current statistics on the gas price of the Ethereum network, this is a great resource for doing that as well. So a lot of times when you're developing for Ethereum, you, you need to convert Ether uh, to different values. Uh, so Ether can be subdivided into smaller values like Way, for example. Um, and you can use a tool like ethconverter.com. All right, so Way is Ethereum's smallest denomination. So it's kind of like a kind of like a penny for Ethereum. Um, Gway is also a smaller denomination. Like you'll see this a lot. Like uh, get back this TX calculator. They'll say what's the gas price, and you'll see this Gway here. All right, so you you can see how much. Uh, you know, if you say 50 guay, how much is 50 guay? Well, you can go to this and say, you know, 50 guay is only this much ether. All right, so this is really helpful. So the next thing you want to know about uh, as far as like developer tools for looking at the blockchain and using it, uh, I would look at test networks next, okay? So, you know, Etherscan, this was the main Ethereum network that we were looking at, but there's also other... Uh, test networks that you can deploy your smart contracts to to test them out before you actually go to the main Ethereum network. And that's really important because these test networks don't use real cryptocurrency. It doesn't have value, okay? So if you don't want to pay a bunch of money to test your smart contracts out, you can uh, test them on one of these test networks. So first one is Rinkaby, all right? You can see the Rinkaby Explorer here. <laughs> Looks like Okay, here we go. Awesome. Yeah, here's the Rinkeby Explorer. You can see all of the stats and data on this. Uh, I'll put a link to this down in the video description below as well. Um, you can look at the Kovan test network. This is the uh, Etherscan version. So this looks a lot like what we saw a minute ago, but it's actually a different website. All right, so this is the main Ethereum network right here, and this is the Kovan one, okay? So uh, Kovan is just another Ethereum test network. It has a different consensus algorithm. Um, it's great for testing out smart contracts. So one question I get a lot is like, how do you actually get cryptocurrency to use on these test networks? All right, well, again, it's not worth anything, so you can just get it for free. All right, you use a faucet for that. So you can go to the Kovan uh, faucet. Here it is right here. Uh, you have to log in with GitHub in order to do it, but I'll just do it right now. And you can just say, uh, here's my Ethereum address. Send me some free uh, Ether for the Kovan test network. That's what KETH is, okay? The Robston test network, this is just another Ethereum test network. And you can also similarly look at the Robston faucet like this, all right? You can just you know similarly paste your address in and get some test Ether. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go to uh, some decentralized protocols that you should know about. The first one is for file storage. This is what IPFS is. All right, so the docs have moved. 
Click this link. All right, here it is. So IPFS is a distributed file storage system. Uh, it's a lot like a blo how a blockchain works. Basically, you connect to an IPFS node, you put a file in IPFS, and it gets distributed across a bunch of different nodes that redundantly store the information uh, so that it doesn't just live on one place, right? It's not on a centralized web server. It's actually redundantly stored, okay? So I got some tutorials that show you how to use IPFS. You can just look those up on YouTube or Google. It uh, should be one of the first things that comes up. So the next thing is Swarm. I would highly recommend looking at Swarm as well. But it's a censorship resistant storage and communication infrastructure for a sovereign digital society. At least that's what they call it. So this is a basically a decentralized gateway to the web. Um, you can read more about Swarm here on uh, this documentation. So next is Whisper. So Whisper is a uh, DAP communication protocol. And some people use it for talking to you know, smart contracts on the blockchain, but some people also use it for like chat clients and things like that. That's how status works, um, which I'll talk about here in a minute as well. Um, so that's Whisper. Uh, ENS is another thing you should know about. So ENS is the Ethereum name service. So essentially it's like domain names for the blockchain. Um, think about how a domain name works. So essentially like if you go to any domain name registrar, like GoDaddy or no, Namecheap or something like that. Essentially, you buy a domain name like, uh, let's just, you know, look at this. Uh, let's just look at dappuniversity.com. Right, so if you look at dappuniversity.com, it actually points to an IP address on a different server, right? This is just, uh, I, I got bought this and just pointed it to my website server. So similarly, for ENS, you can buy a human readable name and point it to your Ethereum address or smart contract or something like that. So essentially, you could just do like, uh, say, dappuniversity.eth, right? And this would point to uh, an address instead of, uh, you know, a website, okay? So that's great because that means you don't have to memorize these really long uh, strings like, you know, you see this? Like, this address right here is really hard to remember. Well, you could just create an Ethereum name service address and it would point to this, okay? It's much easier to remember and to read. So next is Aragon. Uh, if you want to create a decentralized autonomous organization or a DAO, Aragon is a great way to do that. Basically, it allows you to manage your organizations and run your government uh, on the blockchain. You can just for like payroll. You can vote on things. Uh, you can distribute tokens. Uh, so if you want to get interested in DAOs and you want to scratch that itch, then I highly recommend looking at Aragon. The next thing is uh, 0x. So 0x is a decentralized exchange protocol. So if you want to build a cryptocurrency exchange in a decentralized way where you don't uh, control the user's funds, then 0x is a way to do it. It does it based on relayer technology. Uh, you can read everything on their website and look through their documentation on how to do that. Um, so look at 0x if you want to build a decentralized exchange. Next is Uniswap. This is another way of doing uh, decentralized exchange. You can look through the developer documentation here. Uh, it allows you to basically just swap tokens with smart contracts. Um, the next would be the Compound Protocol. All right, I've done some videos on my channel about Compound Finance. Essentially, what it does is, you know, these these last couple things I mentioned are, are DeFi protocols, so decentralized finance. Uh, it's a big trend in blockchain right now. I've made some videos about that recently. Compound, what it does is it allows you to, uh, you know, take out loans on the blockchain and also give competitive savings and interest rates. So you can create clients that talk to uh, Compound Finance. You can create your own smart contracts that talk to Compound Finance as well, their underlying protocol. And this is the developer documentation that shows you how to do that. So if you want to create a way to, you know, uh, take advantage of the Compound Protocol and like interest bearing accounts on a stable currency like DAI, for example, Here's the developer documentation that shows you how to do it. All right, next I want to mention a few front-end frameworks. So if you want to build a website that talks to your smart contracts or any kind of app that allows you to create a prototype or you know just interact with the smart contracts so that people don't have to do it directly with their wallets, um, you can do that with React.js. All right, so React is a component-based library for building JavaScript-based applications. I've got several tutorials on my channel that show you how to learn React and use it. And also I teach React inside my blockchain developer bootcamp. Um, okay, so another alternative to React that a lot of people like is uh, Vue. So this is Vue.js. All right, this is a sort of front-end framework, uh, a JavaScript development framework where you can build uh, user interfaces um, to talk to smart contracts as well. So next I'll mention some hosting providers. 
Uh, one that I like and use a lot is Heroku. Okay, so if you want to build uh, an application that talks to your smart contracts on the blockchain, maybe you have a back end of some kind, or maybe you developed a front end website, like I talked about a second ago with React or Vue, you can host them on Heroku. So one thing I like about Heroku a lot is it's uh, pre-configured, basically. Like you can just kind of point and click and do some really fast setup and deploy your application without too much hassle, okay? And you can use, um, they have free plans that you can get started if you want to just create your own projects, maybe for your portfolio or just to play around with. You could also uh, turn them into industrial strength applications um, by paying. So highly recommend Heroku because you can take a project from idea all the way to real world really fast and kind of uh, baby it along every every step of the way, okay? You can basically just click buttons and change how much you're spending, okay? So the next thing is uh, AWS. So if you want, you know, some more kind of hands-on uh, hosting options and you want to configure a lot of things yourself, uh, you want to run, you know, some more maybe complex web infrastructure, AWS is a great resource, all right? Maybe you want to build, a, maybe you want to have a server that runs an Ethereum node. Maybe you want to have, uh, you know, a server that runs your website, all kinds of stuff. Uh, AWS has a lot of products that allow you to do that. So Amazon EC2 is a good example of a web server technology, uh, Elastic Cloud Compute. Oh, sorry, actually, I meant Elastic Beanstalk. Sorry, is the, is the web server technology they also use. Uh, RDS for databases. I mean, you name it, AWS basically has it. Okay, they're even experimenting with their Amazon uh, blockchain service, which you know I haven't done that much with, but you might want to check that out if you're you're curious. Okay, so um, let's look at some required reading. All right, so the Ethereum white paper is a must if you want to get a high level understanding of what Ethereum is all about. Um, this was one of the one of the original outlines of the Ethereum idea when they were running their ICO. So this is just really a piece of history. All right, and I highly recommend reading through the Ethereum white paper. Uh, the next is the Ethereum yellow paper, which is more of a technical specification for how Ethereum is supposed to work. And again, this is a piece of history. Uh, in the blockchain ecosystem, and it'll give you a very deep technical understanding of how Ethereum works. So the next one is a book. This is Mastering Ethereum by Andreas Antonopoulos. Um, this will also give you a really deep understanding of how Ethereum works. And also, um, yeah, it's a great gift for people if you want to teach them how to use the blockchain. The next one is Mastering Bitcoin. This is a very similar idea. Also by Andreas. Great book, um, especially if you want to give it to other people so that they can understand blockchain. It's really great for you as well if you want to understand how Bitcoin in particular works. And both of these are just great books for blockchain developers in general. All right, so some more required reading uh, is the Week in Ethereum newsletter. So if you want to stay up to date with what's going on in the Ethereum ecosystem, you can subscribe to this newsletter and get the updates. You can also read them here on the website. Uh, there's also some cool benefits and perks for joining this uh, mailing list as well. So the next thing is uh, Reddit. Uh, the R ETH dev uh, subreddit. This is a great place to hang out if you want to uh, learn more about Ethereum development and also find jobs. Like you can find this huge subreddit where people are talking about hiring blockchain developers. All right, so next, if you want to go to some conferences and meet other blockchain developers, uh, there's several. So the first is DevCon. This is the main Ethereum conference that happens every year. Uh, this is an international conference, so it's usually in a destination that Pretty much everybody who watching this video is going to have to travel to. Um, also, TruffleCon is another one. So if you want to, uh, you know, go connect with some more blockchain developers, TruffleCon happens pretty much every year. I was at TruffleCon last year giving a talk. Um, so highly recommend checking out TruffleCon if you want to. The next one is uh, ETH Denver. So this is another blockchain developer conference that happens every year. Uh, at the time of recording this video, it's actually about to happen. Um, so you can apply now. It's not too late. All right, also, I'll give you some resources for getting a job. Um, Hired.com, I really like them a lot. You can basically create your own profile and uh, have jobs or sorry, companies apply to you instead of you being on the offense. So you basically, they'll match you with a company and you can find your expectations for salary based upon your experience level and your technologies. Uh, so like, you know, blockchain developers are pretty highly paid and you can see what you might expect to earn as a blockchain developer on Hired.com. So another resource is CryptoJobsList.com. 
Um, you can, you know, search for blockchain jobs, not just developer jobs. You can do anything in blockchain, but they have, you know, developer jobs. You can filter by that. Uh, you can do your location. You can look for remote jobs stuff like that. So, you know, here, uh, let's just see, we just click a job because he's senior software engineer in blockchain for, you know, a little over a hundred grand a year. Um, so the next one would be cryptocurrency jobs. This is similar to cryptojobslist.com. Um, similar kind of thing. You can just search for jobs in your area. Uh, you can filter by jobs, all kinds of stuff. You can see a solidity engineer full time. Okay, and so last but not least, uh, let's see here. If you want to, you know, learn blockchain skills, you want to become a blockchain master, you want to become a highly paid blockchain developer, uh, you can join my blockchain developer bootcamp. All right, this is the best way to learn the skills that you need in order to become a blockchain developer. I go deep on a lot of these uh, resources that I mentioned in this video inside my bootcamp. I teach you blockchain from scratch and show you everything that you need to become a real world blockchain developer. So you can sign up here to join. Um, all right, so I hope y'all like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, click the like button down below. You can join my bootcamp uh, to become an in-demand blockchain master. All right, hope y'all like this video. And until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.